Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Giannis Pappas Hour, where news meets pizza plates. Unbelievable time to be an American. Marjorie Taylor Greene says that she believes states should secede from the union based on the crisis at the border. Uh, Biden is being impeached uh, via Mr. Kennedy, who's uh, someone in the, in, the, in the Congress who's saying we're going to you do you, you want an eye for an eye, baby. You know, tit for tat. Let's go. You're going to impeach our guy. We're going to impeach your guy. We're going to impeach your guy. Everyone's getting impeached. Everyone's a fed. Everyone's getting impeached. I believe every single person will be impeached by 2024, including the attorney general of Texas who can't keep his weenie in his pee pants and maybe doing something bad. But hey, we may be on the brink of World War III. Russia and China's meeting. We're looking over to Vietnam saying, hey, guys, you want to make some iPhones? You got some minerals? We'll find another third world country to make our stuff. We don't need you anymore, China. Hey, Indian, booty, 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 boo. We're putting out the Batman signal to India. Booty, 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 boo. Make our stuff. We got tons of stuff to make with you. Be our new ally. We're turning our back on China, who was our frenemy, more our enemy. But hey, football's back. And that's all that matters. Unless you're a Jets fan. Um, because God said, Aaron Rodgers, you should have took the vax. <laughs> I don't know. Novak won the U.S. Open and he got the Moderna shot of the day. Talk about irony. <laughs> I mean, it was uncomfortable how they sponsored that tournament. You just see Moderna everywhere. Like, I get it. I'm for capitalism, I guess. I don't know, but can we tone it down with the goddamn covid back sponsorship of the U.S. Open? If just for not, I don't want to be thinking about how Novak wasn't allowed to play twice. Don't get me wrong. I'm a Nadal fan, um, and I think he won it when Novak wasn't there, so thank you. But Novak would have won two more. He is the GOAT. Serbians are taking over. But they did get beat by Germany in the... Uh, in the basketball finals, America didn't medal again. The United States, uh, listen, the rest of the world's catching up. Thank you, Germany, for beating Serbia. Otherwise, it would have been Serbian domination. Novak winning the U.S. Open and the Serbians winning the basket, the World Basketball Cup or whatever it's called. So the Germans stopped it. So I'm appreciative. And we may need you again. We may need you soon because this Russia between this alliance between Russia and and uh, and. China and Iran may be happening, a new axis of evil, and baby, we may just need, we may just, you know those movies where they call the old detective, you know, and they're like, we need you, we need you, Rook, <laughs> and we just have, we have to go to Germany and be like, we need you guys to get your boots on, and they go, really? Because they're going to get excited, you know, because they just retired in the mountains, and we go, yeah, 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 but we, 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 we're going to make the boots this time, okay, and we need you to stay focused over here, and they go, but Arista, Israel, no, 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 <laughs> keep it out. Okay, listen, maybe we'll, maybe, we look, we got to manipulate them. Okay, guys, we need you to focus over here. See, Iran takes them. Okay, we take them, but after that, we can go? No, 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 no. <laughs> Leave them alone. It's like trying to tell a German shepherd not to, not to chase a tennis ball. It's like, no, you got to leave those guys alone. We need you just, we need you for the Iran axis of evil. That's what's going on in the world. Uh, Vivak Ramaswamy, my boy, say it and so. Eminem says you can't use the song. Uh, Vivek says he's against affirmative action. He's going to get rid of it. But he, it was found out that he took a Soros-funded affirmative active immigrant scholarship while the guy was making close to a million a year. I call that good business. <laughs> I don't call it hypocrisy. We will get into it. We got a lot to get into, including how Elon Musk prevented the... Ukrainians from using Starlink to launch a drone strike against Crimea. He's getting involved. I think that's a bigger scandal than Deflate Gate. This is the Honest Pappas Hour. This is going to be a goodie. Remember to subscribe to patreon.com slash Giannis Pappas Hour for more bonus I episodes. I snuck it in when we're still having engagement. Now grab your panties, put them on your head, and let's start this party. You hear me, YouTube monetization? Let's rock and roll. Guys, 
guys, oh, see me goodness. on the road in Calgary, Alberta, September 22nd through 23rd, Fort Wayne, Indiana, September 29th through 30th. The Vogel in Red Bank, New Jersey, October 14th is almost sold out. As of right now, there's less than 20 tickets left. Go get them. Austin, Texas, I think maybe the Sunday show on October 22nd has some tickets left. The rest of them are sold out from October 19th through the 22nd. I'll be at the Comedy Mothership. Maybe a few tickets on October 22nd still left. San Francisco, Cobbs Comedy Club, Club, October 27th and 28th. Sony Hall, New York City, November 4th. Providence, The Comedy Connection, November 10th and 11th. Phoenix, Arizona, Sergio Chicone will be there with me, November 16th and 17th. Spokane, Washington, December 1st and 2nd. Tulsa, Oklahoma, December 8th and 9th. Louisville, December 15th and 16th. Vancouver, The Vogue Theater, January 12th. Tickets, GiannisPapasComedy.com. They're going quick. Toronto, Ontario, the Royal Theater, March 23rd. Kansas City, uh, April 11th through the 13th. And Portland, there's a theater that's being booked right now. That will be coming soon as well. Also, San Diego will be getting booked too. And more dates. Um, again, Patreon.com slash Hour. Now let's enjoy this episode. Vaccines are back. The FDA... Uh, who I think um, is is run by members of Moderna and Pharma, mm. Moderna, Moderna and Pfizer, um, have approved new vaccines. So the vax is vax. So, but here's the thing: I don't think anybody's going to get it. <laughs> I just don't think anyone's going to get it. You know, it's at this point they did a huge marketing campaign. It's like the WNBA; they tried. And people tuned in for a second. It's like women's soccer. They had a moment. And then they just lost. It's just, I don't know if they could get people into it. I don't know what we could do to get people into the vax. What kind of marketing campaigns? Let's give Schultz a call and say, what would you do <laughs> if you were Moderna and Pfizer and, and the government? How, what, how do you get people interested in the vax? Because people get vaxxed and they still get COVID. So most healthy people are going like, why would I, why would I feel sick twice? Why not just get once? Now, listen, if you're old or you have half a lung or whatever, look, do whatever you got to do, baby. <laughs> try whatever you got to try. But at this point, I just don't know. They got to do like a huge marketing campaign with like Christy Brinkley, like because she's older, but she's still hot. She's like up there and she's like, you know, I'm 60. I'm still, but I'm still a MILF to the bone. I'm single because that little squeak. Billy Joel left me, but I'm still a hottie to totty. But you know what? I'm taking the vax because, because Moderna gave me a million dollars to say so. Christy Brinkley, humana, humana, humana. Hi, mama. <laughs> now how, like some people just are born gifted, huh? What is she, 70? She's got to be 70 at this point, right? So you hire Christy Brinkley. You do a former supermodel. She's 69 years old. Yeah. I nailed it. She's almost 70. She looks incredible. Did you? Cindy Crawford of 57 looks incredible. But you get all these former supermodels. I think you, that is the way. You do a campaign with former supermodels. So the mind goes, beauty, we're older. You get a little older people into it. And then for the kids, just put it in camel cigarettes. What are they doing now? Vape pens. <laughs> Vape store campaign. You know, like Joe Camel did. You remember Joe Camel? Who was that aimed at? Not 50-year-old people who've made up their mind about life. Not people who have mortgages and wore ties. It was a camel sitting in a car with a hottie in a convertible, right? And they always posted the signs real low at the bodegas so kids who were like 12 could see them. There was a reason why I was unconsciously hanging Joe Camel ads in my bedroom. Because <laughs> they were fucking cool. <laughs> He was cool, man. And he had a dick for a nose. He had a dick for a nose, and then they probably did that on purpose, so that went viral. People were like, do you see the guy standing with his penis, with the erect penis? Everyone remembers that, right? It's like the Richard Gear gerbil in the butt. It was, it was part of the culture. It was like jerky boys. It was part of the viral culture before the internet where everyone would look at these packages and try to see uh, uh, on the actual package they would try to see, um, they could do a real life movie with Jay-Z called Joe Camel. Um, if there was a guy standing with a penis, and there was on the box, there was a guy. And then also the KKK one, I think for Marlboro, it was the K's. I think it was something that they did. It was sort of like what the Beatles did when they marketed, is Paul dead? Remember that? 
they do those album covers where he would be the one not wearing the shoes. He was these little tricks to get people talking about the album. It's a little like marketing tricks. Like everyone was like, Paul's dead, but he wasn't dead. It was just a trick, you know? Um, so that's what they got to do. Put it in cereal. Cereal, put it on the back of cereal. Instead of missing kids, you're missing your shot. So it's like a missing on a milk carton or an almond milk carton because that's who you're really going to target. <laughs> you're not going to really target the milk drinkers to get because they're not taking the vax. I tell you that right now. But the almond milk families might do it. So on your almond milk, your vanilla-flavored almond milk, have a little missing instead of the missing kid that they used to have from our generation along with all this other stuff we're talking about. Just have a vic missing vax. You're missing your vax. Last scene. How funny is that? I'm thinking like a marketer. Last scene and then the date, 2021. Please help us find the vax and put it in your arm, child. I think um, in Canada, they've they already recommended the shot for six months and old. Six months and up. Oh, <laughs> so, and this is uh this is an Omicron variant, and that is um less virulent. But they want people to six month old babies to get vaccine from a, it's a cold at this point. It's a bad cold. At this point, I, is it worse than the flu anymore? No, because everyone has some exposure to it. The flu is going to be bad. I'm getting my flu shot because I'm a... <laughs> is there a controversy over the flu? Can you still be a man if you get the flu shot? Because I feel like if I get the vax, if I, get the vax I won't be a man. I think the, the new culture is you, you can't. Are Democrats getting the vax? I don't think anyone's getting the vax. No. Oh, man. So the vax is back. So that's that's an interesting marketing idea. Guys, you can take that for free. Obviously, people are listening to this for free. So take my advice. Do the missing <laughs> the missing child uh, the missing child motif on the almond milk box of the missing vax. Last scene, boom, your last vax date. So you're pitching this to Pfizer? I'm pitching this to Pfizer, baby. <laughs> throw us a goddamn check. I'll say what you want. Moderna, throw us a check. I mean, what's the what's the big deal? Throw me a check. Who cares? Trump tweeted that he was down at the, at Ground Zero helping out. He wasn't. It was proven, but people still tweeted it. Nobody cares anymore. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. He said Obama wasn't born in his country. You know, but he, I think he was, right? Was Obama born here? I mean, nobody cares. You can say anything. I mean, I get it. People are upset that he's getting impeached, but the guy did try to overthrow the elect a little bit. No, just a little. And also Biden claimed he was at ground zero on 9-11 and he wasn't, but also Trump did too. So nobody cares. Trump did also, and they both got caught. They've both been proven wrong, but nobody cares. Shoot from the hip. Even if you're not shooting from the, shoot from the hip means a guy's honest, right? Now we got to come up with a new one. Shooting from the dick. Let me shoot with the dick with you, Bobby. Let me shoot from the dick. So Biden also, uh, in his speech to service members and first responders on the anniversary of September 11th. By the way, that just passed. I just want to say sad 9-11 to everyone. <laughs> you can't say happy 9-11. No, it is kind of like a holiday, but you got to go sad 9 -11. You got to, you know, when you put up your thing, it's like sad 9-11 with an exclamation point. So, um... Uh, so he wasn't there. And also Trump. You could look up Trump also. And people were tweeting it. They were going, while Biden was in Alaska on 9-11, Trump on 9-11 was like down there on, at ground zero, but he wasn't. He wasn't. It was something that he had got caught lying about a long time ago. The, guy, the guys told a few fibs. They all have. You think it's possible to have an honest person? I think Bernie may be the only honest guy, whether you agree or disagree with his politics. He's never been caught in any lies, right? Even his tax returns, the guy was making like, the guy was making a teacher in a rich suburb salary. He's like making $127,000 a year. Let's see. Has Bernie ever lied? Let me tell you right now. <laughs> First, you take the 4% and you put it to the 2%. I'm the only candidate in the Democratic uh, primary to have voted against all of Trump, Trump's defense budgets. False! You lied, Bernie. 42% of Walmart's associates are black. False. You lied, Bernie. 40% of the 
Guns in this country are sold without a background check. Also false, Bernie. <laughs> so keep going. This is fun. One more. Donald Trump has not apologized for comments caught on tape by Access Hollywood. He did apologize. He said it was locker room talk. <laughs> when Trump won, we had the lowest voter turnout in 20 years. Also false. Wow. I mean, there's a long list of Bernie lies. <laughs> it, there's got to be, you know how, I don't know, there's, there's simple fixes to a lot of this stuff, man. Do you know how um, professional sports leagues have ratings? They go back and they rate the referees based on the calls. And then you get a, and those referees who are the highest rated get to ref the playoffs and the finals. It's a merit-based system. Merit-based systems work. They just work, right? In a lot of ways, they do. There should be an organization like PolitiFact, which I, people yell at all the time. They don't believe in PolitiFact because they think it's skewed one way or the other, or whatever. But there should be like some sort of ranking where the pe like some committee ranks the veracity, get smarter, of... Um, politicians. So then when you come in, you come in with a ranking. This guy's got a 97% veracity ranking. He doesn't lie, you know? Because that's got to matter for something, right? These people can't just keep lying and getting away with it. You know, we got the two top presidential candidates just both both have told whoppers about where they were on 9-11, okay? That's only reserved for comedians who have sizzling careers that can take it away from them. Shout out Steve Renazisi. I'm glad you're safe. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I hear he's a nice kid, but you know, I mean, it is what it is. Every 9-11, you got to throw a shout out to him as well. <laughs> because he made it out of a smoke-filled office. <laughs> I also escaped from the towers on 9-11 by not being in them. <laughs> so that's the part he left out. He could have just said, I escaped from the towers on 9-11 and then mumbled because I wasn't there. And then when people said it, be like, go listen back to my Marin. I said, because I wasn't there. That's how I escaped because I wasn't there. I was telling a whopper. Whoppers are funny, no? When people tell whoppers, because a whopper's a big one. Little lies are, they're also funny, little lies, because you're going like, why? People who tell little lies are just like addicted to lying. But people who tell whoppers, like a whopper, like, that's a whopper. That is a whopper when you go, hey, I escaped from the towers on 9-11. Then you're going, as soon as you it comes out of your mouth, you're probably just going, Fuck. <laughs> fuck. There's just probably a huge fuck that sounds off in your brain like, oh, fuck. You know? So everyone's telling Whoppers. Um, rough, rough time to be a Jets fan. Rough. Oof. Rough time. Aaron Rodgers goes down. 39-year-old Aaron Rodgers goes down in game one. He's got an Achilles injury. Jets fans, it's just, it's the Groundhog's Day for you guys. It's tough. Just switch. Why can't adults just switch? You know? I've switched. Jesse's off the Knicks. It's very easy to switch when you're an adult. I've noticed that. When I was a kid, it was harder mm. to switch my team allegiance. But when you're an adult and... um you have real life concerns, you just switch. You know, I'm a fair weather friend. I'm, uh, I'll pick whoever's winning. I got kids, I don't care. When the Christian Ayatollah comes, you don't think for one second when the Christian Ayatollah comes, I'm not turning you in because you have Jewish heritage? You got another thing coming. I, I, am, I am the humpback from the 300 Sparta movie. I go with the winners. See, All my Jewish friends will be turned in first. And then Jared Harvin, you kidding me? <laughs> we uh, we did a show um, in Springfield, Missouri this weekend at um, at a really fun club with a really cool owner um, called the Red Room in Springfield, Missouri, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, I uh, Yakov Smirnov, remember Yakov Smirnov? Of course, yeah. He, he lives in Branson, Missouri, so he came down. He did some guest spots. Really? He's seventy two. He looks great. And he's still doing comedy. It was really fun and inspiring to see someone look that good. And he's also got like a 30-year-old wife. So that was fun. I saw my future. I was like, okay, when am I supposed to get the new iPhone? <laughs> I asked Yakov. I was like, look, the new iPhone 15 is out. 
but you know what I'm talking about. When do I upgrade my wife? <laughs> <laughs> Every two years. Yeah, so he's got a young new wife, and he looks great, and he's a gr nice guy, um, and he's, ru he's a Russian spy, so that's cool. <laughs> um, and then there was a 91-year-old guy on two of the shows who's a local in Missouri, in, um, in the Ozarks, and his name is Old Man Willie. And he's 91, and he tells these dirty jokes. And um, I said, uh, he's so old that when he saw Jared on the stage, he goes, what happened? They're free? <laughs> <laughs> Guy's 91. He's doing comedy talk. He's 91, Old Man Willie. He's a 91-year-old guy. So he walked in, he saw Jared. He goes, what's going on? This is, this is wrong. He's like, he can't, he can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's old man Willie. He's got a gram. He's got a gram. Uh, and Jared had a funny joke. Shout out Jared Harvard. He goes, uh, uh, the host who was the owner of the club, um, who basically, as Jared said, is the, he's basically the Springfield, Missouri soul Joel. He had the same energy. Those guys all have the same energy. Those hustler, producer, club owner guys. He had the same energy as soul Joel. And, um, he goes to Jared, okay, oh, uh, Willie's got three minutes left. And Jared goes, on stage or uh, in life? <laughs> <laughs> so we had fun down there. We really did have fun. At, uh, it's a great club, Blue Room. Um, and if you want me to come back, you're going to have to pay me a lot better than what it was. Oh, yeah? I'm just saying. Um, but it's a great room. Um, I had a good time. Hotel was great. And it, was, uh, it felt good. I just, I just enjoyed doing comedy this week. And it was really fun. Um, and there's old man Willie, 91 years old. <laughs> I think he only performs there now. He started when he was 67 years old. So there you go. That just lets you know it's never over, man. It's never over. He's, he's 91. And then he got bumped by Vivek. I mean, not Vivek. Vig What's his name? Uh, the, uh, the guy, the Russian guy I was just talking. Oh, Yakov. Yakov. Why would I say Vivek? Because Vivek's on my mind. I mean, a lot of people like Vivek. Jesse hates his story because he likes Vivek. You like Vivek. You like him a little bit. He's pretty impressive. He's a smart guy. He's smart. A lot of people are saying he's a snake oil salesman. He's full of shit a little bit. Yo, but, you know, like, they all tell whoppers. That's what a politician is. They, they just tell whoppers. Um, and Vivek got caught in two, two whoppers this weekend. Um, he got caught in two wop wops. One of them was a tweet that he sent after um, January 6th about Trump. And the tweet was very hardcore. Um, he called Trump a horrible, his horrible actions, reprehensible or something like that. And he refused to say what he meant, right? Because we all know what he meant. But, you know, he's been playing this sort of, because Trump is the front runner, he's smartly been playing it like, hey, man, I'd pardon him, all this stuff. But he, he they, they, caught, they caught him on a tweet. They caught him on a tweet. They caught him on an old tweet. And then he also got caught. Um, he is against affirmative action and said that he will abolish affirmative action. And then it came out that he took a George Soros-funded scholarship to go to the university while he was making uh, $700,000 a year. So... Um, I just call that smart business, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he really, um, he really didn't have an explanation for it except for the fact that he said, I think, he goes, you're talking about my gross. He goes, 700000 <laughs> you're talking about the gross. He goes, look, I had a lot of expenses, prostitutes, uh, <laughs> taxes. So he yelled about taxes. Um, so he was trying to, he was trying to squirm out of it, but, it, it, you know, he took a George Soros affirmative action scholarship while the guy was making close to a, a stick a year. It's a tough look because you're, you're saying you want to abolish it, but you benefited from it. You took it, which shows obviously that you're not um, principled on it when it comes to you. So it's a tough look. That's a tough look. There's no other way around it. It's a tougher look than his receding hairline. I mean, everyone's getting hair tits now. Shout out Dan Soder. <laughs> Vivek, before you run, you should have got some hair boobies. <laughs> um, what can you do? I mean, look, the guy was making close to a mill. He took the scholarship. Rachel Dolezal 
took a black scholarship. So did Sean King. No, Rachel Dolezal, um, I think she sued a school for discriminating against her because she was white at one point, right? Or black or something. Whatever it was, she sued a school. These are smart moves. Like, can we just accept who we are as a country? We're a country of criminals and shysters who are impressive. What do we love? Mafia movies. We love true crime. We love John F. Kennedy, whose criminal bootlegger father stole the election and put him in office. We loved Richard Nixon. We elected him. Okay, what did he do? Break into the DNC headquarters. He committed a crime. Bill Clinton, what did he do? He stuck a cigar in a 21-year-old woman. He rolled a cigar in somebody's poos poos. This is who we like. We like f- wars that are, are, are in the wrong countries. Weapons of mass destruction. What? Where? Colin Powell's a hero. We forget that. Rachel Dolezal sued Howard University for alleged discrimination that favored African Americans. She made it to, what was it, vice president of the NAACP in Seattle or something like that. These people are brilliant. Who do we love? Who do we make movies about? We're not making movies about the woman who founded EMDR therapy. That's that's getting me out of the woods. It's unbelievable, by the way. I've never felt better. Um, you know, that helps first responders, um, soldiers, police officers, victim of crimes. We're not going to make a movie about her. Nobody would see it. Nobody's going to see that. Milk didn't even do that great at the box office. And he did something good, right? We want to see Rachel Dolezal movie. I do. I want to be honest with you. I want to see a Rachel Dolezal movie because that would be a movie that the the left woke people couldn't argue against because it would have to be a white woman playing a black woman. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't say give it to a black woman because you're going like, well, the movie's about a white woman who's pretending to be a black woman. So we're going to give it. We're going to give it. But I guess they could give it to a half black, half white woman who plays up the white part. And then and then you avoid the controversy, <laughs> you know, because acting has to be reality now. That's who we like. People who tell whoppers. We love a good whopper. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. He looked right into the camera while in his brain. He's going like this with a Cuban cigar <laughs> and coming all over her, her dress. We love Whoppers, you know? That's who we love. We don't like guys who tell the truth. We love guys who go up there and go like, we love immigrants, and then they, it, he, he just deports anything that has a tint of brown. They called Obama the deporter-in-chief because he deported more illegal immigrants than any president. Someone who goes, I'm a good person, and then he carpet bombs the Middle East. We love a liar, a good, honest liar. That's who we like. Someone who tells a whopper, someone who pretends to be his own publicist and calls the press and says, Donald Trump is going to be there. You ever heard those phone calls? You ever hear those? Oh, yeah. When he played his own agent. When he played his own. Yeah, he was like, yeah. Donald Trump, the, the playboy uh, billionaire Donald Trump will be here. And you're like, uh, that sound, he was pretending to be his own publicist and calling, which is... <laughs> Which is a smart move. Save a couple of dollars. Save a couple bucks. Change your voice a little bit. All you have to do is just like comb it over the other way and just say he's his twin brother that works for him. Do something like that. That's America. Lie, lie. You know, sugar, sugar, sugar is good for you. For, uh, cigarettes, uh, I, before, I do my, before I do my daily medical calls, I'm Dr. Smith, and I can tell you I approve of Salem unfiltered cigarettes. They give me the pep that I need. I mean, that's what we're founded on. Coca-Cola. It's there's cocaine in it. These products are actually made to addic- uh, addict us. They're li- it's all lies. This country is founded on um, brilliant lies. So let's not start getting all fucking nitpicky now about this, that, and the other thing. Let's embrace who we are. Everyone loves a big whopper. <laughs> a nice big lie. So is this gonna is this gonna hurt Vivek, you think? You don't think so, right? Well, I mean, does he have a chance? 
He doesn't have a chance anyway. Uh, but, uh, you know, people hear the word sorrow. I mean, you say Soros. Yes. That's like saying Candyman to the, <laughs> to, to the right. Yeah. I mean, Soros is like, he's behind everything. Just like everyone's a fed when something happens they don't like. It's like Soros comes up. He took a Soros-funded scholarship. That's tough. That's a tough one. If it was funded by anyone else, it might. It could have even been funded, you know, by Mark Ruffalo. It would be better than George Soros, the candy man himself, the boogeyman, the left-wing boogeyman, George Soros, who's behind, behind he's all, he's ubiquitous, he's all-knowing, he's all evil. Um, that's a tough luck. 700 grand in the bank. That's a tough look for Vivek. It's a tough one. And the Trump tweet, we couldn't find it, huh? We just, it's fine. I mean, we couldn't. Essentially, I said what it is. He called, he called Trump abhorrible, abhorrible. His actions abhorrible on January 6th. And um, he, he wouldn't answer what, he, what actions he was referring to. He just kept saying, I would have united people. So we can't find it, which is odd because it's a it's a left wing talking point, and we're on Google. We should be able to find it, but we can't. So, um, anyway, let's move on to a funner story this week that you guys are going to enjoy. Um, and I'm talking to the fellas here, and I'm strictly doing you a solid by giving you this story. Um, remember the name Susanna Sus- Susanna Gibson. Susanna Gibson is a candidate. Um, uh, for the local legislature in Virginia in a suburb district outside of Richmond um, that went for Yunkin, I think. Uh, uh, the guy, uh, the Republican who took uh, the, the governor, governorship um, in uh, mostly uh, Democratic, usually it's Democratic governors in Virginia. And Virginia was flipped by Yunkin. And this, and this suburb went for Yunkin. Virginia's like 50-50, man. It's like really like 49-51. It's like one of those, it's become a very purple state. And so she gets into the race, Susanna Gibson, because she's passionate about the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And this district is very important because like I said, it went Republican, but it could very well go Democrat. She's up against this Republican businessman um, who doesn't do porn on the side. (laughs) Which is my way of telling you that it was found out that Susanna Gibson and her husband um, do t- tip porn for tips. Now I do know those. There's sites right where like you, the couple's doing sex acts, and then the people can tell them what they want them to do, and they offer tips. Chatterbait. Chatterbait. Jesse knows it very well. Never heard of it. Chatterbait. Um, so it's a live stream where she's banging her husband. She's a poor, she's doing ho- she's doing amateur porn. <laughs> she's doing amateur porn. Can we see if we can see some? So she it got found out that she was doing this porn. And of course she's fighting back and saying um, that this violates Virginia's revenge porn law because they were trying to use it because someone took screenshots or uploaded the stream to another site, which they always do with these live streams. They, they, they pirate them and put them up on other sites. And so someone pirated or took her live stream and put it up on another site. So, you, so everyone could jerk off for, <laughs> to, for free. Um, now you, whenever there's a celebrity porn like this or a story, you got to check it out. There's the video. Thank you. Yeah. Here we go. There no, she, Oh, that's her. That's her. Click that out, dog. Click that off. Can you click the ad off? That ain't Oh, her. that's her. She got my vote. You got my vote. <laughs> <laughs> She's got my vote. <laughs> when you leave, I'm going to watch that. <laughs> I'm going to watch that with Eva Lovius. Nobody's that good looking in politics. Flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's her. Susanna Gibson, leaked sex tape full. That's her. Damn. There she is. There's all her. There's all her videos with her husband. She's a hot woman, and uh, they they probably make a lot of money doing this. Her and her husband. <laughs> <laughs> they have two kids. Yeah. Oh, mommy. Yeah, Jesus. they got two kids. They got two kids. Um, 
She's got a tattoo on her. <laughs> uh, ready for office. Ready for office. <laughs> um, I don't know. I got nothing. I don't know. I personally don't care about that. Yeah, she's a good looking woman. <laughs> Look at her husband. He's enjoying that. Yeah, there you are, hubby. <laughs> It would be funny if the, if the, if the, if this was her like if this was her pitch video. She's getting banged. <laughs> yeah. She's like, "Ladies, we're going to over she's like this. We're going to overturn Roe v. Wade one stroke at a time. I need y'all to just donate a couple dollars. This is a great you could raise money this way. It'd be a great way to raise money, a fundraiser. You just up there, "Hey everybody, voters of Virginia. Uh, how are you?" I want y'all to put five tokens in the, oh, my God. Oh, hubby. Hubby, five tokens. Uh, with every dollar, we're going to flip. We're going to flip this district. Nice, puss, puss. Oh, um, it's a cream pie. She's showing us a cream pie. I'll let you know that this candidate is fully shaved. <laughs> And she showed uh, us a nice little cream pie. Uh, Jesus. Hey, listen, custard. <laughs> that would be a great that would be a great Ooh. way to raise a lot of money. You could raise a lot of money on Chatterbait. Apparently she yeah. is. Yeah. Maybe that's what she's doing it for. Maybe she's just doing it to raise money for her campaign. Right. Um she says it won't intimidate me and it won't silence me. My political opponents and the Republican allies have proven they're willing to commit a sex crime to attack me and my family because there's no line they won't cross to silence women when they speak up. So what's the crime, though? The crime she's claiming is it's being released without her consent. It, there's some revenge porn law in Virginia. Right. That she's she's claiming it's revenge porn, but she willingly uploaded it, so I don't know. But someone posted it without her consent, so she may actually have... I, I, that would depend, right, on the legal system, I guess, but not really. <laughs> I mean... You're putting up porn. She doesn't look shy in the video. Yeah, you don't look, you know, it doesn't look like doesn't look like a private video on there the way you're looking at the camera and showing off your cream pie. <laughs> the video ended with a cream pie shot. <coughs> so let me just say this couple knows what they're doing. They're amateurs, but you know, they could have a career. They've done a couple of screen tests. They've done a couple of screen tests, those two. So Susanna Gibson, I just I'm just doing you a solid. <laughs> Go check it out, ladies. Go check it out too. You know, it's it's there. It's what's happening. It's where we're at. It's where we're at. I don't know. You can't add comedy to comedy. This is a hotly contested race, a very important district. And one of the candidates of the two does porn with her husband for money on the side. It is what it is. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. You know? I just don't. I don't think anything sex is bad. I don't think anything sex is bad. I don't know. Is there something wrong with that? Maybe for her kids. But, you know, I'm not her parents. But, you know, it's seeing mommy getting fucked by daddy is a little... <laughs> I don't know what that does. I'd have to ask Eva Lovia. She, we had her on. She's got kids. Um, they're definitely going to see that. Their friends are going to smack off. To, how do you not? How do you not become friends with her kids? Grow up. And not take a peek. It's impossible you're going to take a peek. Now, all their kids in school, you're going to take a peek. It's that, that I think is the, that's the only bad side effect. But as far as like anything anyone does sexually, I just don't think it, it, it really has anything to do with what you, what your competency, competency level is in your career. I guess the only way it's a problem is like, um, the district attorney in um, the attorney general in Texas, he was having an affair and then he hired the broad or whatever, something like that. So I think that can be bad. I don't know. Ken Paxson, his name is. I mean, who's banging this guy? I mean, he look at that. He looks like the elephant man. Attorney General Ken Paxson. He's a Republican who's accused of bribery and abuse of public trust. He was having an affair. Um... He's 60. Let the guy get his noodle wet. It was a, uh, he says it's a politically motivated sham from the beginning. Um, 
Attorney General Paxton continuously and blatantly violated laws, rules, and policies and procedures. Oh, from House Republican David Spiller. So it doesn't look like this is politically motivated. Today's a very grim and difficult day for this house in the state of Texas. Um, so, and he also had an affair or something like that. Who cares? I mean, we're just, the point is, I don't, I don't know if we're getting the best and brightest anymore, or maybe the, the curtain's just been pulled back and they were never the best and the brightest. Who knows? Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is, is responsibly calling for states to secede. Because that will help over the border. I mean, talk about a woman with no good ideas. She says states should consider seceding from the union. (laughs) I hate to tell her. I really hate to tell anyone who doesn't think this is a bad thing to say. I understand there's a problem with the border. But let's say Arkansas were to secede and be its own country um, and would have to pay, like, you know, taxes or tariffs and, you know, like imports from other states. I hate to explain to you, a lot of those states are the poorest states. They're not going to do well. Iowa's not going to do great on its own. Arkansas is not going to do great. I hate to tell people because I know you guys hate California. California will be chilling. New York's going to be chilling. Texas will kind of be chilling, but I just don't think South Carolina is going to do that great, especially when all the tourists from the north don't come to don't come to Charleston anymore. I just don't know how great Georgia will do without the Dems. I hate to say it. The Dem states are where all the money's at, right? Outside of Texas. It's where all the money is. What can you do? How good could Idaho do on its own as a country? They grow food there, though. They do grow potatoes. They get a couple of wrestlers. <laughs> so I don't think it's going to help, Marjorie. I just don't think it's going to help. And I also don't think that... I, I don't think that it's good for Idaho's security. What are they going to... I mean, dude, how many people live in Idaho? So you have to come up with a... Now you got to come up with an army in Idaho? The reason why people unify is because everyone benefits. It's like an office susu. You know? Just because people have differences don't mean you need to secede. I mean, just get your wall built or whatever you want. I don't know. Do something. Get an office and make a change. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know if seceding is the way to do it. Work it through. Work your problems through. This country needs to go to marriage counseling. But once you go to marriage counseling, the problem is you know that it's over. You know that it is over. And I think Putin should be maybe the arbiter. I had a dream last night that I choked Putin to death. What? Like I choked him out and then I was scared because I had killed. Now they were looking for me. It was a weird dream. It was, I swear to God, I, I, I choked him to death with my hand. Jesus. Putin. And um, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, I don't know what it meant, but it was like it was more of like a nightmare where like now they were after me and I right. did something bad and you know. So you didn't become the president of Russia after that? I didn't become the president of Russia. No, no, um, no. Yeah, like they were mad at me. I think he's pretty popular over there. I think Putin is pretty popular. I think he's a pretty popular candidate. Here's a game changer, though, is that they just found 20 to 40 megatons of lithium on the border of Nevada and Oregon. Now, this story has been buried because there's people in the legislature telling states to... Can you believe these headlines, dog, in 2023, like some of them? Does it, like, bug you out sometimes, some of the headlines? Like, uh, you know, Congresswoman says states should secede. (laughs) So it's a bugged out headline. Son's uh, son's son of president caught with crack rock. So the world's biggest lithium reservoir is found in a supervolcano, McDermott Caldera. Uh, Caldera. It's called McDermott Caldera. It sounds like an Irish-Spanish kid. 
McDermott Calderera. It's like a maiden name. It's like a woman. It's like an Irish woman who married a Spanish, a Hispanic guy. McDermott Caldera <laughs> in Nevada uh, with $1.5 trillion worth of precious metal that powers the world's technology. Wow. The world's largest lithium deposit was found on the border of Nevada and, and Oregon. Geologists have uncovered what they believe is the world's largest lithium deposit containing up to 40 million metric tons. I don't know what that means, but it sounds like a lot of the precious metal was identified throughout the 28-mile-long McDermott Caldera, nearly double what has been found in Bolivia's salt flats that have long held the record for the most lithium deposits. While the amount of lithium is based on estimates, no drilling has taken place. Scientists have found high concentration of lithium in the caldera since the 1970s. So that could be a big game changer for domestic production of batteries, lithium batteries. Um, Bolivia is kind of probably a smooth move for us because a lot of it comes from Africa, right? So now they got some in Bolivia. They got those people to work. It's a double-edged sword, right? Because it puts people to work down there, but they get paid very little, right? But down there, the cost of living is little. And then when you pull those companies out, then there's like, what do they do? They go, I don't know. They get a taste for the good life. Once you get a taste for the good life, there's no going back. I watched this documentary about the blue zones where everyone, you know, eats these wholesome foods and they live in communities and families are together, intergenerational relationships, and they all walk uphill every day and they walk every day. And I'm just going, give those people a taste of the good life and it's over, Sardinia. <laughs> You're not living to 100 anymore. You know, give them a taste of, give them a nice 7-Eleven. Throw a 7-Eleven in Sardinia and the centarian life is over, right? There's another one, I think, in Bolivia or Costa Rica. There's another one in Costa Rica where they live to 100. O o o Okinawa, they live to 100. Ikaria, the, island, the Greek island, they live to 100. And all this natural food and uh, it's community and family and low stress, Give these people a taste of the good life because I was watching and I got jealous and I got angry. I said, I don't want these people living in 100 where I'm going to, I'm kicking out of here at 72 because I've been worrying about things that are never going to happen and, uh, you know, I'm married. Whatever. It's like, give them a taste for a good life. I hope they find a lithium mine in Sardinia. <laughs> and then they just start mining right in the middle of their goddamn paradisical oasis. I don't know if paradisical is a word. Paradise. Paradisical? Paradis paradisial. Why not? Why not? Just start mining right in there. You could have a paradise. If there's some raw material that's needed under those grounds, sayonara. Uh, I, 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 pun intended, Okinawa. Sayonara. Go mining for something in Iowa. I watched this documentary. It annoyed me how happy they were. They were happy and they got nothing. <laughs> They're all like working in their gardens. And they're happy. I'm like, what, what? You're not worried about which comic is bigger than you? <laughs> <laughs> you're not worried about what your podcast ranks? <laughs> it's an incredible documentary, by the way. It's called Secrets of the Blue Zones. The guy that did it did a magnificent job. He spent like 20 to 25 years um, researching these places and then created his own blue zone in Minnesota of 18,000 residents. He found a community and he got the Minnesota government on board and he created a blue zone by doing all the things that he learned, like the factors that he thought contributed to why these people lived so long and were so healthy and happy. And he instituted it in Minnesota and it worked. And it's a lot of common sense stuff, you know? Low meat, high calorie, but low meat. Uh, most of the calories come from other stuff. A little bit of meat, but not a lot. We here get most of our calories from meat. And so though they eat a lot there, but they just eat a lot of carbs or, and it's all natural and stuff. Then the intergenerational hanging out is big. Having a reason for living is big. They, every culture had a word for it. Like, you know, sort of uh, in Latin, it's called raison d'etre, like a reason for living. Like there was a, they, they have a, a concept of that. And so um, gardens and a lot of the, all the communities were steep. So they walk up. So it's strong legs because when you get older, 
you fall and people with strong, so your waist down, the strength of your waist down is very important the older you get because um, it prevents you from falling. And they were exercising without knowing it because they walk. So they don't do intense exercise. They do continual and persistent exercise. So they're constantly moving and they don't retire. They keep working, but they enjoy their work. They have a lot of the same stressors we do, but they take naps, they unwind, they party hard, but it's all about social. They socialize, they have friend groups in Okinawa. They have a term for it, like women's hangout. They have a women, they just are together. Like they form these groups and they help each other out. And the point of it is if one of them gets sick, they all contribute. It's like office susus for friends and intergenerations hang out. The grandparents live with the parents and they all hang out together. So um, we're a social species. So that's a big part of it. That's a big part of our breakdown as a society is first of all, we came here as just our ancestors came here to loot this country. They didn't come here because they were like, I love their, their, I love their customs. They came here like, where's the money? The streets are paved with gold. I can't, I, all the people who came here were greedy fucking so, sociopaths. Our grand, imagine what kind of psychopath you have to be to leave your village to go to un, some unknown land full of Irishmen and try to make it. You don't know the culture. You don't know the language. You leave all your relatives. What kind of psychopath says goodbye to his mom to go fucking open a pizza stand in Brooklyn, New York? That's someone with not a lot of feelings. So all these people, all these hustlers came here, and now we're the just much like Australia is the descendant of criminals, we're the descendant of psychopaths who left their family. Who leaves their family behind? They're here to loot. We all came here to loot this country, get money, and now technology has compounded that and we're just isolated. Nobody hangs anymore. Nobody hangs. There's no men's groups. Let's start a men's group. You want to start a men's group? Where we, we tour the red light districts of the world? <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. That is the real problem. Um, so in conclusion... Elon Musk is taking some slack because he didn't allow Ukraine to use Starlink to bomb Crimea because he was scared it was going to start World War III. He was not under government contract at the time that um, Starlink was given to the Ukrainians. He did that for free at the beginning of the war, but then the government started giving him money. And the government relies on a lot of private industry <coughs> to do a lot of things. And to be honest, a lot of the private industry would not have been able to come up with the inventions and technology that they did without the government, right? Um, Tesla gets tons of, um, what do you call those? Grants or whatever it is. They get tons of money from the government. Um, farmers get tons of money. Everyone get tons of money from the government. They get tons of money. Um, that's why this this sort of myth of laissez-faire capitalism or this libertarian paradise is just it's like uh, it's like being a schizophrenic. You're living in a world that doesn't exist. These kind a lot of these companies couldn't do it. They couldn't exist without stabilizing funding. You know they would just go under because there's a while you're doing research and stuff. You're not raping any profits. You would just go under. You can't afford to pay people, so they supplement you here and there. Farms would go under. It's just what we do. We bail every, you know, the greed gets a little crazy also. And then, you know, the socialism bails you out. It is what it is. Mixed economy is as good as it's ever going to be. I'm sorry to tell you. But um, he ran, he cock blocked. He cock blocked Ukraine trying to bomb Crimea. And um, Elon Musk is just like, he's in so many different genres of news. <laughs> you know, have you noticed that? He's like a dude in so many genres of news. He's in like comedy. He's also like entertainment. It's like he's in comedy. He's in tragedy. He's in drama. He's in, where does this guy find? He doesn't do blow. He's got to do at least Adderall. How do you keep all this up? You know, like what did you do today? Right? Did you walk the dog? Carried him up the stairs, yep. ate an orange, 
and stared at one of your pieces of art and thought about what you're going to do, what your next piece is going to be. That was your day, right? <laughs> no, I had a busy day today, actually. Well, let me hear what the busy day was. <laughs> I had to walk the dog. Walk the dog. I had to go to the city, pick up a bunch of artwork. Pick up some artwork. You had to travel. I had to travel. Yeah. yeah I came back, had to walk the dog. Walk the dog again. <laughs> I was working on your special. Working edit, on the special. Edit. And then I rode my bike here to do the podcast. You had six things to do today. Six. And you, I'm not done. You still got stuff. I we still, still got, got a stuff. bonus episode. We got to eat yeah. like fat pigs. How many things do you think Elon Musk does before like 11 a.m., dog? Oh, my God. He's got like four massive companies. He's got contracts with the government for internet over Ukraine during a war. Yeah. Then he's running Twitter. He's got to tweet some irresponsible stuff. He's got to say hello to his trans daughter who went woke. <laughs> He's got to deal with the stress from that. He's got to remember which wives belong to which kids. He's got a lot to do. Yeah, but he makes 200 He's getting sued by the DOJ yeah. for, uh, you know, for not hiring enough asylum seekers. Yeah. He's got to hang out with Joe Rogan and eat elk meat. The guy's got a lot to do. And he gets paid for it. He makes a lot of money for it. But he, he stopped him. This is so crazy. And then Putin called him an, a great guy or something like that. So, listen, it can't hurt. You know, Putin's a scary guy. It can't hurt if Putin says, you know what? He's not a bad guy. So what does he say? Putin hails Elon Musk as an outstanding person after Starlink controversy. So Putin was thrilled. Um. So the government is now going like, all right, what are we going to do? If you're not going to, you're not going to provide the Ukrainians on this never-ending mission, on this Ukrainian meat grinder. How many Ukrainians have died? Why don't you just call this project Ukrainian meat grinder? Yeah, I think at this point we got to find some sort of solution so people stop dying, right? I don't know what you can do. You can't do this like Putin's the next Hitler thing or whatever. I don't, you know, he's never going to invade Poland, dude. He's not going to invade a NATO country. He knows it's over as soon as he does that, right? So at this point, it's like, what are we doing? The Ukrainian people are dying, like crazy amounts of people are dying over there. Operation Ukrainian Meat Grinder. That's the title. This episode, I think, was comedy light. I think it was a little comedy light. I don't know. I can never tell, though. People sometimes love these the most. I can never tell. Maybe people loved a lot of the stuff I was saying. I have no idea. But we've hit every single story, and we got four minutes left. So my instincts are telling me this may not be a goodie. Or maybe it's a goodie because it's less. I don't know. I cannot tell. I'm starving. I just want to say thank you to Springfield, Missouri, for a good good weekend of shows. Patreon.com slash Giannis Pappas Hour for our weekly bonus episodes, which are really laid back and absolutely wild. I really do believe we have one of the best bonus episode channels in the game. Please support the show. It's you get a you get a weekly episode for like a dollar and a quarter a week. It's five bucks a month. If you can afford it, do it. Even if you can't afford it, sign on for a little bit and then leave and come back. I don't care. It's up to you. Do what you got to do. But definitely sign on. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Giannis Pappas Hour. I got about 50 shirts left. So what you do is go write a review and rate the podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Take a screenshot of that review and um, message me on Instagram. Um, or actually, a better idea would be to email. Um, what's the email? I can't remember it. Message me on Instagram. Message me on Instagram with the screen grab. Now, I only have women's sizes and like one man's size, so you'll get whatever size I got, but you will get a shirt. I want to get rid of these shirts, so do me a favor, and I'll do you a favor. Go be proactive. Write and review the show. Um, uh, do it anyway. Tell friends about the show as well, and um, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of these small business shout-outs. We always have fun with them. What's up, everybody? Want to give a shout out, out as always, to ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. If you're moving your car or you bought your car out of state, give them a holler. They got free quotes, student and military discounts, surprise. ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. Jared Z. Chris Minetti. 215-750-3730. Nothing else. It's a phone number. You get your check cashed if you're in the Philly, South Jersey area. Okay? 
So it's that, I'm just talking to you guys. You live in Cherry Hill or make the drive. If you got a shady check and you want to cash, make the drive. Give it a whirl. Chris Minetti. Has anyone tried and is still alive? I want to hear a review. <laughs> he has no Yelp reviews. Where would Chris Minetti's reviews be? They're all dead. They're all dead. You can't live after. So I'm just handing you bodies to kill Chris Minetti. 215-750-3730 in the Philly, South Jersey area. Minetti Financial Services will cash your check. For the free dot art, music in Hawaii. Next. <laughs> Displaypros.net. They'll br- they'll build your trade booth for you. Your sh- your trade show booth. These guys will build anything for you. Promo code. What's the deal is for ten percent off your order, or tell them Yanni sent you. Displaypros.net. Ma Insurance Services. M A Insurance Services stands for Matthew Albani, not Ma, but it it, it could very well. Call him at his mother's house at 813-260-0338 or the website mainsuranceservices.com to get your insurance in the St. Petersburg, Florida area. We're talking about workers' compensation, commercial property, auto, professional liability, general liability, and umbrella brands. It's a local independent agency, very independent, located in St. Petersburg, (laughs) Florida. Brother, staffingbeaver.com. Hire some illegals. (laughs) <laughs> staffingbeaver.com follow them on twitter at staffing beaver they will save you 70 percent of what you're ca- currently paying to fill uh jobs locally at whatever business you're starting so a 30 minute discovery call uh will save you that money so call up what is it rob rob call rob um and they will find you offshore remote talent to fill important roles in your business capper tech the largest sports handicapper marketplace on the web they're that big God, these guys are getting a steal. Getting a steal. Fucking 50,000 people. Uh, Cappertech.com. They're a handicapper. (laughs) Download their app or Google Play Store or on the uh, Apple Store. They take zero commission. Um, You keep all the money you make. These guys will give you tips on how to bet, right? That's essentially what it is. They offer a platform where all the betting picks are documented and released 20 minutes after the game starts for free. So you know it's no funny business going on either. So Capper Tech, download the app and check them out. 